Hello and welcome to another leak code problem. We're going to be doing problem number 560 subarray sum equals k. And it's a pretty common problem and it uses an algorithm that you're going to want to be familiar with. It's not super intuitive for sure. So it does use an algorithm that you're going to want to be familiar with. And while the algorithm isn't too hard, too hard or at least part of it, figuring out to use it is the hard part. So let's actually go over this. So we have a nums one 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 and we have a k equals two. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find how many subarrays in here that are contiguous. That means they have to be, you know, you can't skip any elements. How many subarrays add up to two? So in this case, we actually have two. So the subarray is this one right here and this one right here. So that's two. And then for the second example, k equals three. So we have two subarrays. The first subarray is just the three, and then the second subarray is one, two. Okay, so how do we figure out how to do this? And it's actually, so what are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out the subarrays that add up to k. Well, so anytime you want to do this and they are contiguous, what you're actually going to want to use is you're going to want to use prefix sums. And what prefix sums means is, I have gone over before, is we are literally just going to be adding up numbers and storing the sums. So normally when I have prefix sums, I have prefix sums at an index, but here I'm actually gonna use an object because the index really doesn't matter. And so what we're actually gonna be doing, so by the way, so let me just go over what prefix sums are quickly. Prefix sums are basically, so let's say we have this object like this, one, one, one. The prefix sums are basically the total sum of everything up to that index. So it'd be like one, two, three, right? Because the first element is one, and then at element two, it's the whole thing up to two. And then at element three, it's all of the three elements. So that's pretty much what it is. And now let's see what it allows us to do. Well, if we have a total, right? If we have a current total and we're trying to find your, figure out how many elements add up to K, well, we can actually do total minus K. Like we're gonna have a current total and then we are gonna have total minus K. We can figure out, is there an array that is this Right, so we're going to ask ourselves, is there an array that equals to this number, whatever we have as a current total? And if there is, let's say we have an array and we're ac we actually want the number of arrays for that case. But if we do have an array, remember our prefix sums start from the start. So let's say we're at some index. So let's say we're at some index like n. If we have an array, if we have a multiple arrays, that total minus k, there are these arrays. That means that number of arrays, let's call that like x or something, that number of arrays, each one of them will have another array after it that will equal k. Because if total minus k equals this array x, right? So then it'll be like this plus this equals total. And so there will be some prefix array and then there will be a k array. And so if we can just count how many of these prefix arrays do we have that add up to x and then for each one of those we're going to have a k array so yeah and let me actually walk through an example of this and show you how it'll work okay and then this will make it a lot easier to understand i think so i actually have a example uh that i found that is pretty good so it's going to be this right here and we do have negative numbers so we can definitely have like multiple arrays that add up to the same number prefix sums because we can have like like let's just say we had some array and then we had like plus five minus five plus five minus five plus five minus five and then you would have the same prefix sum for like a bunch of those okay so we're gonna have this and then we are going to have we're going to have k equals seven so we're gonna try to find subarrays that equals seven and so we're gonna have this prefix sums we're gonna have a cumulative total and we're gonna store them and then we're gonna see how this is gonna work so by the way, we're gonna we do need to store one thing, and that means we're gonna store that the pre so key is gonna be like the the total value in the prefix sum, and then the value is gonna be how many times have we seen that before, and we do need to we do need to initialize that. So let's call this dictionary p maybe, and so we are gonna initialize key zero with value one, meaning uh, the empty like the array with prefix sum zero has a value one, meaning the empty array has value one and that's important because like let's say your total is your current thing and you have seen it before that means you're going to want to have this uh this right here because this this just symbolizes like the the empty array 
Because if your total is your whole array and you removed your whole array, then that's the empty array. That means your whole array equals k, which is definitely something valid, right? Like let's say you have one, one, one equals three. You're definitely gonna wanna have that, right? So like this, and then your k is three. You're gonna have a total here and you're gonna need to ask yourself, have I seen it before? So that's for sure gonna have to happen. But yeah, so that's pretty much gonna be all for this. So let's actually go through you know, the, the, the run here and let's see what happens. Okay. So let's start with this three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a total and we are going to, and we are going to keep checking if we've seen this total. So let's just have a total value called T and we're gonna start at this index. So first thing we do, we add the current index to the total. So it's gonna be three. And we ask ourselves, have we seen, so we actually wanna not see the total. We actually wanna ask yourself if you've seen the total, remember minus K. And so the total minus K in this case would be um, three minus seven, right? So three minus seven is negative four. Have we, have we seen that? Well, we haven't seen that. So we don't need to do anything. Now we need to, after we check, we need to actually add the current total and how many times we've seen it. So we're gonna add a three and we're gonna say we've seen that one time. Okay, now we are over here. Our current total is now seven. Okay, then we need to do T minus K. And this is why this is why you're gonna have the zero. It's gonna show you the so T minus K. Let's actually uh, move this somewhere else just to have more space, right? So let's just do T minus K here. Uh, let's just do it like maybe over here. Okay, so t minus k is going to equal seven minus seven, right? Equals zero. So we're gonna ask ourselves, okay, have we seen zero before? Yes, we have, we've seen it one time. Okay, and, and let's also, we need one more variable for the output. So let's just call that maybe like O and let's put that uh, over here. Okay, so we're gonna set O equal to one because we have seen it before. So t minus k is zero, we have seen it one time. So we're gonna add one to the output. Well, it's actually, Instead of O, let's just call it R's and res because the O looks like zero. Okay, so this is gonna be the output. We have seen it. Now we need to store this value. And this is this is why you need this zero because the total is actually this whole array. And so the prefix for this is gonna be the empty array. Okay, so now we need to store the total. We, we haven't seen it before, so we just need to do once. All right, now we are at the next value. We need to get a new total. So now our total is plus seven, so that's 14. Okay, what's t minus k? It's actually 14 minus seven equals seven. Okay, have we seen seven before? Yes, we have, we've seen it one time. So let's add one to the result there. Okay, now we need to add our new total. So we have 14, we've seen it one time. And notice how so for so when we were at the four, this subarray was a, a valid array, and now we're at the seven. What subarray is a valid subarray? Well, it's actually this one right here. So that's also a valid subarray. And so what happens is the the like the t minus k subarray is this, and this whole sub this whole array is this. So the k array is this right here. Okay. And so now we need to keep going, right? And so, so yeah, the, the subarray wasn't actually this, it was it was this right here. Okay, so now we need to keep going and we did add the 14, we need to go over here. Our new total is 16. We need to do 16 minus seven and that's nine. Have we seen nine before? No, we haven't. So we just mark it down. Uh, oh, oh yeah, sorry. We don't mark down the nine, we mark down the 16 actually. Screw that up a bit. Okay, so we haven't seen the nine, but we mark down 16, we move on. Okay, we have negative three. And so negative three would be 13, all right. And so here we need to do 13 minus seven equals six. Have we seen a six before? No, we have not. So we mark down the 13, okay, move on. Now we have a 14, 14 minus seven, seven. Have we seen it before? Yes, we have one time. So let's add another one and let's just take a look. Do we have some valid subarray here that we haven't used before that now we can use? It's gonna be a little tricky to find, right? Yeah, definitely gonna be a little tricky to find. We need we need something here that's like a seven in some way. 
So this is like, let's see, negative two plus, oh, it's, it's actually going to be this, this array right here is the valid subarray, right? So this is nine, 10 minus 37. So, so that, that, that is another one, right? So you can see like, as soon as we get a subarray with our algorithm, we're actually finding it every time. And so now we need to mark the value again. So I forgot if we actually added it here. Uh, I'm honestly not 100% sure, but you kind of get the point on how the result works, right? Like every time we find something, we add one to the result. I'm not 100% sure we added it, but either way. Okay, so now we need to store the value again. Okay. And so now we need to move on. So now we have this value four. So now we have 18. So we have 18 minus seven. We have 11. We have not seen 11 before. So now we just need to store 18. Now we need to go into this final value, which is 20. 20 minus seven equals 13. We have seen 13 before. This is gonna be kind of annoying to find. Well, actually it's not gonna be that bad, right? Because if we have seen 13, that means there's gonna be, yeah, so there's gonna be some part here that's 13. So what's that? That's seven, 14, 16, 13, okay. So this is the subarray that is the prefix, and this is the subarray of the seven. All right, so it's not that bad actually. And so this is the new one. We found it right away. We add one here, and then finally we store 20. Okay, and then at the end, our result is five, which like I said, I'm not sure if I forgot one, but either way, you kind of get the point. So you're you're just storing these, you're just storing these um, prefix sums, and you are checking if you've seen them before. And if you've seen them before, so a lot of times also the counts of them will be more than one, in which case there's multiple prefix sum arrays. And so like, let's say this 16 was two, we would add two instead. And for something like that, then let's say, obviously I can't, uh, so let's just say, you know, let's say you do have subarrays, two subarrays that add up to seven, some prefix sums, obviously these might not, but let's just say we do. And then, so like, let's say you have this one adds up to, uh, sorry, it wouldn't add up to seven, it would be add up to T minus K. Then this would be a valid K array. And then like, if this added up, then this would be and so on. So if you have a bunch of subarrays that add up to T minus K, then you're gonna have multiple K arrays and the number of new ones is gonna equal the count that was in here. So it might, it's not always gonna be one for sure. That's why you need to store the count. It could be multiple, like you, you could get a number multiple times, like I said. Like imagine you had something like, you know, something like this, three, four, seven, and then you, you just had like negative seven, seven, negative seven, seven, and so on. You can have a bunch of these, right? And so there's a bunch of different subarrays here that will work. Like if you had these infinitely, then like, this is a subarray, you know, this is a subarray, or not that one, like this is a subarray, and so on. So you kind of get the picture, that's why you need to store the count. Okay, so let's actually code that up. And my font's a little bit bigger to make it easier to see. So we need to have these like prefix sums, let's we'll just call it equals dictionary. We're gonna to make it default dict to make it easier. We need a total. Now we're just gonna go through the number, and we also need one more thing, so result. Now we're gonna go through the numbers and nums. So total plus equal num. And then result is gonna add, this is gonna be prefix sums of total minus k whatever is in there. And then finally we need to, after we actually get how many times it's in there, we need to add it to the prefix sum. So prefix sums total plus equals one. That's why I use a default dict because the default value here is zero even if it's not in there. Same thing here. If it's not in there, it'll just give you a default zero. So let's code. Uh, this is annoying. This issue. And then we can just return a result. And I think that should be it. Oh, let's see what we screw up here. Okay, so what I realized I forgot actually, it was we never had, remember we need to have the base case of where the prefix sums of zero is one of the empty array needs to be one. So that's what I need as well. So that's gonna be, and you can see that in this example, that would also be the case, right? Like when you have these two numbers, the total is two, and then we're gonna look for a zero, which we have. Prefix sums 
this year it needs to be one. Okay. And so now I should have viable solution. Cool. Okay, perfect. And so, and I think this is like, there, I think there's an n squared solution here with O of n space, but this is an O of n, O of n. So here for the time, we're gonna be O of n because we're at linear time and space. We are also at O of n because we have to store the prefix sum at every single number. And technically all these prefix sums can be different. So worst case scenario, that's gonna be O of n as well. So this does uh, optimize space and time together where you can have some solutions that are O of n squared time, but O of n space, but this is like the optimal solution for both. Okay, and so that's going to be all for this video. If you liked it, um, please like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.